My name is Radosław Biel and I'm a PhD student of Wrocław University of Technology and Science and also an editor in the po Polish popular science uh, archaeological magazine Archeologia Żywa, like uh, shameless plugging. Uh, I'm here on uh, a behalf of a much bigger team. Uh, it's consisting uh, archaeologists, historians, physical and cultural anthropologists, also botanists and zoologists. We are also cooperating with forestry services and local associations working to protect the heritage of forests. Unfortunately, my co-presenter and boss, uh, Paweł Konczewski, visible on, uh, on this photo, uh, uh, couldn't uh, join us, but uh, thanks to that, I can at least admit truthfully that our title is a little, little clickbait, or should I say, uh, hearbait, because uh, in the next 20 minutes, uh, as uh, especially attendees of this conference, you probably won't hear from me anything new or in innovative that you didn't already know. Uh, as outline shows, uh, firstly, I want to point out a couple of well-known facts about archae archaeological forest research. After that, I will talk about the place of our research and uh, its goals. Main, the main part of my speech will be the general presentation of all stages and methods mostly described by Camille in a previous presentation, uh, also used in our research and uh, so our somehow chaotical approach to it. And finally, I will summarize everything, explain how it could be done better and uh, what is worth keeping in mind in the future. Uh, for a little more than five years, our team have been researching relationships between natural and cultural heritage in woods of Central European lowlands, we thought that uh, this amount of time is enough to develop the most efficient ways of research, but uh, our hubris sometimes led us astray and we didn't even remember about uh, these basics. Our place of interest, uh, village Neuhaus in Polish or in Polish Nowoszów, is located today in the southwestern Poland, in the middle of uh, Lower Silesian Forest, the largest continuous forest of Poland. The village's location was complicated from the beginning of its history. It was created somewhere in the 14th century at the historical borders of Upper uh, Lusatia, Lower Lusatia and Lower Silesia. Thanks to the plans of the Prince Polko II, for a short time it was an important stop on a trade route from Silesia to Zatia, but shortly after his death, the idea of alternative trade route crumbled to the same way the castle he built in the village, by the hands of the citizens of Gorlitz, or in Polish Skorzewets. With no regards to this episode throughout most of the history, residents of Neuhaus were occupied with uh, activities typical to a woodland la landscape, especially with an iron smelting processes. The village survived many disasters, but finally had been deserted in 1945 during the Second World War. Even today, this place lies on the border, which uh, are visible on the slide, of not one, not two, but three forest districts. Uh, and everyone here probably realizes how problematic that can be when dealing with permissions for research. Our goal, uh, written in the application for funding, was to study the impact of anthropogenic um, activities on the natural landscape in prehistory and history. Until our arrival, this place uh, was an archaeological terra incognita, mostly forgotten but scienti by scientists, but uh, not metal detectors and treasure hunters. Uh, so, in addition, we also wanted to inspect and document what still was visible. But, maybe only in my mind, our main and true goal was to find this castle destroyed uh, in 1368 and uh, whose true location seemed to be later forgotten. We only knew that the village spent many kilometers uh, along the banks of Czernawielka River of course, the first thing we did was a short trip on the side to look for a small hill, uh, which seemed obvious back then. We even had found one, but uh, pretty soon we discovered that it was purely natural. Only after that, we started our work with historical records and old maps, and somehow we narrowed our area 
of interest mostly to the center of the village located in uh, this small island. Uh, as you can see, some of the buildings are so clearly visible, that's one here and here and here and maybe here, uh, that they are shown even on Google Maps and OpenStreetMaps uh, to this day, mostly incorrectly, but uh, props for them for trying. During the first survey, we discern a few kinds of areas with different possibilities for a future survey. We avoided uh, marshes and the southern part of the island uh, was not only covered in a dense vegetation, but uh, also in a slag, uh, the aftermath of uh, the uh, or iron ore smelting. So in any geophysics, there seemed like a waste of time for us. There were also two kinds. Uh, of forest, a nice one, like uh, the one on this side, in this picture, where we could do mostly everything, and uh, another one, more, more difficult, where uh, vegetation was very dense and most of wars would be possible only after intense cutting and clearing, and it wasn't like we didn't even want to try it, but we just weren't allowed to. This was probably our biggest failure, and not, not realizing that some work won't be just not so easy. Nearly every one of them took uh, around something uh, four times longer than in an easier terrain. And so, uh, with high hopes and good spirits, we started mapping with the site with a good old total station. Of course, it took a lot of time, especially when due to the dense vegetation, we needed to often change position. <coughs> uh, but the result of this kind of work are always worth the effort. We didn't have a GPS RTK back then, so all measurements were uh, saved in local coordinates. Uh, two most interesting objects were part of the mill. Uh, you can see here, uh, like all the buildings uh, built partially from uh, the bricks and partially from the sack uh, also. Uh, and the second one was uh, the biggest building at the site interpreted by us uh, as the medieval castle. And I still don't know why we thought that calling to newspaper, newspapers and telling them that we have found the forgotten medieval castle seemed like a good idea for us then, when we just uh, had just begun our work. Uh, after that, we uh, made a VTM and, and started uh, georeferencing our measurements. Although we have sent a request to a proper office for a LiDAR data uh, nearly a month before a start for, of our first works, its completion took longer than we expected. Uh, not uh, a model, but uh, our requ request. We got it just after the end of the first season. We had only, only one point cloud with a nominal density of uh, four points per square meter. And when it was good enough for understanding the a bigger picture of a whole area, it didn't help us in mostly in discerning uh, smaller and singular features. The most useful work was just mapping on the side. The most interesting were uh, these, uh, ter oh, oh. these uh, terraces visible here and here, uh, for example, where, which we think that they are the results of intense bog iron uh, or ext extraction. In the second season, we returned re return on site with our colleague uh, Piotr Wroniecki. With the use of GPS RTK, we had georeferenced our er earlier measurements. This also could have uh, been done only a few scarce places without a, a canopy, which were uh, here and uh, somewhere around here because uh, mm, forests were uh, so bad for. Uh, Making a, taking a signal. We have also conducted a geophysics survey, which involved uh, such methods as electrical resistivity and magnetometry, but uh, also due to difficult terrain, we couldn't uh, survey the most interesting spots for us. Uh, we also knew that despite all the hard works, uh, we were still missing on our map at least uh, a couple of buildings. Uh, that's why we undertook once again studying historical records, uh, uh, this time with help of historians, 
and uh, correlated our data with the uh, 19th century uh, highly detailed map uh, from German uh, Mestischblatt from 1928. Although we have used it uh, earlier uh, during mapping process as a printed out version, it was much uh, much easier to analyze when uh, in this kind of uh, situation. Uh, this led to finding and mapping more buildings, also some in the more distant areas like uh, near the second and uh, third mills. Once again, it was a shame we didn't think about it at this whole beginning, because uh, during this we also have found uh, this picture, which uh, shows a later uh, building Gasthouse or tavern, titled as a Schloss, which in German, of course, means a palace or a castle. And according to our knowledge, it was located in the center of the village and the exact place of the building which we uh, thought as a, our hypothetical medieval castle. Finally, uh, after all this prep work, uh, we wanted to test our theories in the most traditional way by doing excavations. We set up three trenches. Uh, first was um, near the castle in the place where some magnetic anomalies were discovered. We also knew that we won't make it in a given time with unearthing all of the building, so we wanted to at least check its vicinity in a search for any medieval, me medieval artifacts. And we found only two fragments of ceramics, uh, so I wouldn't say it's uh, a success. Uh, also, uh, there were also two trenches where, uh, which were located at the cemetery and they uh, were set up for students of anthropology. Uh, we whom helped us in our work uh, so they, they could study also the biological conditions of past Neuhaus residents. During the surface surveys we also have most probably uh, found one of the buildings burned down during uh, the 30 years wars with uh, ceramic tiles and uh, fragments from this period and of course using a structure from motion photogrammetry techniques we have created the 3D models of trenches, found skeletons, and uh, the fragment of uh, this mill. Of course, it, uh, has, this technique has its own limitations, but even in this uh, or less dense forest is also viable to use. We also got in contact with local association of explorers and metal detectorists, uh, as they wanted to help us in solving the area, but it led to a single, just singular action. They were very fond of these dense bushes and slugs scattered all around the island. So uh, while coming to an end of my presentation, I would uh, like to go back to my list of well-known facts presented previously. Mm. As you all have seen, different methods gave us uh, various results depending on many factors, and mm. terrain difficulty was one of the most important ones. We made a lot of mistakes, but most of them were uh, pretty easy to correct. Sometimes it just came down to a better communication of ideas between team members. I'm pretty sure that mostly thanks to storing all of the collected uh, data in a single GIS database, we got anything out of it. Uh, its usefulness is unrivaled, uh, even in a basic result research like uh, such as ours. Even if GIS is not uh, salvation for every of uh, future problems, it certainly is a great fix for many existing ones. I know that these aren't any revolutionary conclusions, but I really hope that in the near future, thanks to the knowledge, I will acquire at such splendid, splendid meetings such as this conference. Someday I will have a possibility to show you something more spectacular. Until that day, I wanted to uh, remind you that uh, sometimes remembering bas basics can save you a lot of time, which probably in my case is right now coming to an end. So on that note, I would like to thank you for your attention and to also shameless plug. If you want to uh, write something for us, we uh, the last, uh, it's uh, a quarter, quarterly publishing, yeah, four, four numbers in the year. And if you want to uh, publish something in our last uh, number, last issue which will be on the topic of uh, forest archaeology we invite you all we will be more than happy to translate it for you from english to polish
Thank you for your attention.